So with that, I'm welcoming you to the power of change. And uh, gentlemen, I just want to make this comment. We are all secure enough in our manliness that we can certainly partake in a woman's Bible study. Because that's what this one is, a woman's Bible study. So you're not going to see a whole lot of these kind of genetics going on up there on the screen. Uh, but we'll make up for that in our, in our discussion here. So without further ado, I'd like you to watch an introduction to it. So that's the introduction. That's going to give us a little idea of what we're looking at uh, right now. Let me check my brains here. And before we go any further, Sandy's going to bring us into our presentation with a prayer. So let's pray. Gracious God, we praise you because you are so good and you are so faithful and everything that we have and everything that we are flows out of your love for us. And we give you thanks for that, Father. So now we're thankful for being able to come back and dig into your word again, um, do the, the work and writing of some people that you've gifted very well. And so we give you thanks for that. We pray that you will come and send your Holy Spirit to move among us and help us to take away whatever it is that you want us to take away today, Father. It's in your name we pray. Amen. 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 And as Pastor Scott has been doing in the sermons these last couple of Sundays, and as we've been taught in the missional communities and as leaders of the missional communities, um, and it's not just for reading the Bible, but there is the know what and the now what, or the so what and the now what. And so we'd like to be leaving this whole thing with that. Keep that in mind also. So the title is Power to Change which would indicate to me, even an unlearned person like myself, that we're going to talk about change. So, what's the definition of change? What is change? And by the way, Sandy has coached me a lot on, I need to get comfortable with silence. Okay? I need, I need to get comfortable with silence so that we give time for people to think and all that kind of stuff. Okay? but five minutes is too long, so we're not going to have five minutes of silence. So, so what is change? Well, something goes from one thing to something different. Okay. Going from one thing to something different than what it was. Okay. Trying something new. Say it again. Trying something new. Trying something new. Okay, I'm going to change up the way that I'm dressing. Mm -hmm. Or a whole life. <laughs> or change the whole life. <laughs> it's changed. Give her a hand, would you please, sir? No. She's having a hard time getting that rascal back on. <laughs> um, and it's amazing how many different definitions there were in the dictionary for this. Um, but the one that I really, I think it spoke to me after watching these things, is uh, to make the form or nature of something different from what it is or from what it would be if left alone. That would be change. So we're obviously we're talking about change. We're talking about, uh, as we've said right here, a process of, of making something different than what it is. Um, so as Christians, what do we want to change? Why do we have to do this? We're Christians, right? We're children of God, Glenn? That's what I'm saying, is it starts with the heart. Starts with the heart? Yeah. Okay, so we need to change our heart. Is that? Or modify it. Or at least modify it somewhat? Okay. Change our body, mind, and spirit. Change our body, mind, and spirit, thanks Lee. Yeah. Okay. Because of our sinful nature? Our sinful nature we need to change? But aren't we forgiven? 
Are we children of God? Forgiven children of God? Saved already? We've already gone through justification. Okay. We've Repent, already gone sinner. through salvation. <laughs> what? Repent, sinner. Repent, sinner, right here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We don't have enough time to do the study and me repent. Okay. <laughs> that I, takes a long that's time. Because we're always, we're always sitting, we always have to repent. Sure. Of, you know, the wrongdoing sure. that we've done. But we do have salvation. And we have justification. We've already gone through those. As confessing Christians, confessing belief in Jesus Christ, our Savior, we've already gone through those. What we are in the midst of is the process of sanctification. And you're going to hear that word used a lot during this study, sanctification. Um, do we have to change? Comfortable yes. silence, comfortable yes. silence. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we do. We do. Why? Jesus, Jesus wants us to change, become more like him. Where do you get that from? The Bible. <laughs> Kind of an interesting book. In the men's group, we call it a totally outdated and irrelevant book, you know, because that's what a whole lot of people consider it, you know. Um, but we do have to change, right? Because, as you had said too earlier, honey, we are by nature sinful and unclean, and we have to go through this process of sanctification. Um, so, if it's a process, if it's a journey, where are we going? How many of us get up in the morning, step out, get into our car, turn it on and drive, not knowing where we're going? Typically, we would know where we're, once in a while, Sandy and I'll take a drive down the country roads and have no earthly goal in mind at all. Oh, let's take this road. Oh, let's take that road. You know, <laughs> things like that. We, you do it too. <laughs> yeah. Um, we don't do that as often as we used to or as often as we should, but we do. But most of the time, you get into a car and you get ready to go somewhere, right? Okay, so now we know the change is a process where something is made different. We know that we have to change or we should want to change because Jesus has told us that we should change. We should be more like him. So what is our goal? Become more like Jesus. To become more like Jesus. See, that's, so that's where we're heading. Um, and to become more like Jesus, what do we need to do about Jesus, about this fellow Jesus? What do we need to do about him? Do about him? Yeah. For instance, let me give you an idea. Let me give you an analogy. In my estimation, most, if not all, analogies fall short of what the presenter is trying to, to put out, just like all generalizations are false, including the one I just made, okay? <laughs> okay? So, but the analogy, and let's say that all of you, and I cannot come up with a reason at all why this would be true, but all of you wanted to be just like me, okay? <laughs> and again, we'll go back to that caveat. I have no idea why you would want to, but let's see. <laughs> You'd be just like me. Um, would it work to do that if once a week we got together in kind of a big group for one hour and did a lot of different things and all like that, and then we went away from each other and that was it. And then we would do it again, say in another week. Let's say Sunday, just for just for giggles. Okay, how long would it take for you to get to know me? And to become like me, doing it that way. Not long enough, I mean. <laughs> and it's not that I'm that complex either, <laughs> by any stretch. No. But it would take a long time. It yeah. would, yeah. yeah. No, let's say that again, using this very imperfect analogy, that you wanted to be like me, and Sandy said, "I will come and stay with you, and I will talk to you about Tony the entire time you're awake." And I will get, let you know more and more about what he's doing. Would that speed the process somewhat? Okay? I don't want you to be like me. All right? I really don't. But the analogy, I think, is there, right? So that's kind of what we're doing. We're talking about change, making something different than what it was or what it could be if left unattended. Okay? 
We're doing it because Jesus wants us to, right? And what he wants us to do is become more like him. And it is biblical. It's very biblical. And if you go into John 16 and 17, you're going to find him saying that a fair bit. Okay? So it's not something that we have interpreted the Bible as saying. He's very clear on that. So given that, we're going to watch the video for this one. Just a real quick synopsis here. Not of the video. Synopsis is the wrong word. So what we'll do, we're going to watch this. We're going to discuss it a little bit afterwards, and then that's going to be the end of it. There is weekly reading or daily readings for the week and daily scripture readings for the week. Those you have to access via an, a link, an internet link. Chad is going to send that out to whoever wants it. And if you want to, you can give me your name afterwards, and I'll make sure he gets that. Those are daily readings and daily reflections. There's probably about a three-paragraph reflection. Um, next week, we'll come back together again. We'll discuss briefly the readings that we have, the, the Bible readings, the reflections, and then we'll watch next week's video, discuss it a little bit, and then go out the front door and probably forget everything to us that we had just talked about and what it is we're going to do, because that's typically how this guy works, okay? I like the, the sign out there that says you're enter, entering the mission field. It just reminds me a little bit. Okay, Sam. I know I've read it several times in my lifetime. And how many of us have really seen but God? How many of us have really seen that and taken it to heart? Sandy and I were watching, more than 20, um, Sandy and I were watching this, you know, in preparation, and she watched it first, I watched it second, and she said, when we got to that point, it brought me to tears. And it brought me to tears, too. But God, that was, that's pretty powerful that he would do something like that. And I don't think we're ever going to really know the full impact of what but God does. Comments, thoughts on what we just saw? Something you want to share? Struck your mind? Be comfortable with silence, Tony. Be comfortable with silence, Tony. <laughs> Steve. I really thought that um, it was important that they brought out a reality in that there is an enemy, Satan, who whispers in our ear when we do feel stuck. You're never going to do this. And uh, the father of lies is there. And just acknowledging that reality of, of Satan, I think it's important to point out. We may be a new creation, right? But I think along with that, someone hangs a huge target on our back. And that, huge. that we're in a war, too. Yeah. That, that reality of, of war, um, we, have, we have the victory but there's still a reality that we're in the war. And that, I think, helps you, um, it helps me anyway, acknowledge reality mm -hmm. of living on this earth. Mm -hmm. I think we all want to have that power to just change like that. And when she mentioned the, it's a, seri it's a series of small choices of obedience that lead towards this peace, that's, that's the part, I think, I've seen an experience in my own life is that the power of the Holy Spirit isn't necessarily accessible when when we're constantly choosing to disobey. In my experience. Absolutely. And, 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 uh, and then I always feel like too if I want to try to I always I like the concept of how do we change, right? So you give me information about how to change my or I should change my diet. How do I do that, right? Mm -hmm talk about the small choices and that sort of thing. The thing that I find comfort in is that I remember that God is slow to anger. It doesn't mean he's permitting me to continue sinning, but while I'm trying to make small choices, while I'm trying to make uh, small steps toward change, um, like Steve was saying, I feel like there are uh, Satan, it's Satan whispering in your ear, you know, like, oh, you're not good enough. That's not big enough change, you know. Whatever is, is being whispered, but to me, the counter is God's slow to anger. Yes, I'm sinful. Yes, I'm 
I'm not this perfect person, but I'm making small steps. And, you know, like I feel like he gives us that grace in the change process. And it's always going to be a change process. Mm -hmm. But uh, that helps me anyway. Mm -hmm. We got some time. I mean, we, we, we've got some I mean time. there's some urgency to change, but at the same time, habits are hard to change, and uh, small steps and forgiveness is, you know, good. You know, one of the thought things that came to my mind as I was watching this, and back to your point, Steve, about being in war with Satan and all that, Satan's an angel, right? I, I'm not making up weird biblical theology here. Satan is simply an angel. Number two. Okay, number two. He, he can't do things that we give him credit to do. He can't create things. He has a finite number of demons. Now, is he going to spend that resource on non-Christians? He's already got them. He's already got those folks. So, yeah, he's going to come in. And I, I know we all experience this on a weekly basis, on a daily basis. But there's sometimes I'll be putting around out in a workshop or something like that. And he's got those guys in there just messing with me 17 ways from Sunday. Doing this, slapping this tool out of the hand, macking, smacking me, the, the whole nine yards. And it's just there, just getting me to not follow Christ. Just a little bit. We don't have to deny Christ. We don't have to get up and say, no, there is no Jesus Christ. We don't have to do that. We just don't have to obey him. We just turn a little bit. We've been talking here about that large word, sanctification. So as I asked earlier on in, in the thing with change, how about a definition of sanctification? What, what do some of you think sanctification means? Cleansing. I'm sorry? Cleansing. Cleansing. Cleansing, yeah. Okay. Make holy. Make holy. Yeah. Set apart. Mm -hmm. Wash the clean. A process. Yeah. You bet. You bet it's a process. And that's the part that I think we want to really kind of focus in on. Um, it is a changing, it's a cleansing, it's a making holy or setting us apart from the world. It's that, but it's a process of doing that. Um, just want to make sure I cover the things. Progressive movement towards righteousness, right? Um, one of the guys that uh, on this, and it was uh, Chandler, Matt Chandler, and I think he did it during the trailer, maybe it was this one. At any rate, uh, sanctification is not a moment thing, okay? It's not a moment thing. Salvation is a moment thing. Justification is a moment thing. Sanctification begins somewhere and it will end the moment we die. And until then, we are undergoing sanctification. So it's not a shazam kind of a thing as I like to, to say it. And that's actually what I was looking for for a long time. I was looking for a shazam moment for me. Okay, wait a minute now, Jesus. I said this and I said this and I, I read the prayer exactly the way I heard him say it, you know, and the whole nine yards like this. And I still cussed, you know? So what's the deal here, you know? It's not a shazam. In our missional communities, one of the questions we ask ourselves is, uh, how did you see God at work this week? That's one of the things we ask in, in the missional communities. Um, and I just want to share one thing, that how I saw God at work on preparation for this. I had a good analogy uh, in mind, but I was going to try and put it into words that would make sense, and I don't need to, because God provided Steve Rolfe. Because you were my analogy. And I've, and I've got it written down. If you don't believe me, i got it written down. I'm, I was going to try and use you. So, Steve, in one of your works of art, what do you begin with? My, my medium that I work in is, is uh, dirt. Not quite so profound, I guess. It really, <laughs> really got the camera going. <laughs> uh, 
So it's dirt, it's clay. It's clay, yeah. yeah. It's and there's just a pile of it. Most basic right? material, yeah. And then you, in your mind, go, this is what it's gonna be, and it instantly turns into that, right? Oh yeah. Right? <laughs> Every time. Instantly, instantly, as soon as you go, it's gonna become a vessel. It instantly becomes a vessel. And it always looks exactly like exactly. here, right? Maybe that's not how it works. Not a, not a chance. So talk, talk us through how that actually works then. What do you have to do? It's a, you, um, it's a, it's a process of really uh, working with the material. The material wants to do its own thing oftentimes. And you're, you're trying to orchestrate. It's pushing against you. You're pushing against it. And um, it, it's, yeah, it's a long process uh, to get where you want where you want it to be I guess actually it actually has this thing that that's called memory where if you don't work it enough it'll go back to just a tad earlier in the process mm. so yeah. you do have to really Steve are there ever any human. times <laughs> when, when you're making this whatever it is whatever you're making are there any times when you look at it and go nope and you smash it all the way down and you start all over again. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Have any of us ever experienced anything like that in our lives? Huh? <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Pure as the driven snow on a cloistered convent roof, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We are just all right there. So go ahead, Steve. Just I just think Jackie brought up something that I, I didn't think of that is really important with clay anyway. Yeah in that it does have this, this memory and you really have to work the memory out of it. Sure. Because if, and so for example, if I'm working and I make a wrong move, it'll, um, the clay particles will quickly align to that mistake that I make. Yeah. And you have to really keep working it. Otherwise, if you don't, when it's fired, that memory, you'll, start, you'll see that memory. So for example, if it was pushed in a little bit too much here, you won't see it when you're working. But when it's fired, that memory will take over, and you'll see, and you'll see it. Mm -hmm. So I, th I think that's a really important yeah. point that you're making. Or if you don't take the memory into account when you put a handle on a cup, the handle after firing will be crooked. Oh. <laughs> so are we the clay, or are we the? We're the clay. <laughs> We're the clay. <laughs> we we are the clay. Um, one of the pictures that came to my mind as we were thinking about this change, you know, and it's not instantaneous. Let's say that you're driving down 94 um, towards Eau Claire and you go, oh no, I want to go to Minneapolis. And so the car immediately changes direction. Where's your face? Right against the windshield, right? Because we can adapt to a change that fast. You know, the car might be able to just on a dime, spin and go, we can't. We're gonna plant, face plant. Um, another one that came up, and, and I like analogies because I'm not really, a, a real, I can't think well. Um, another analogy, we've got several doctors in here. So you've got an infection, and we go and see Marv, and Marv says, I'm gonna give you a prescription for antibiotics. And so you go and you fill their antibiotics, and you come home, and you put them in the medicine cabinet where they belong, safe and sound, and never take them. So how long is that gonna to take to fix that little problem that you have? Or let's say you do start taking it. Does it go away right away? No. Sanctification is a process. It takes a while. One of the things that he really likes, um, he meaning Satan, that he really likes for us to do is to get discouraged with ourselves and I got to tell you daily you know during devotions during the confession part I got Jesus I did the same thing yesterday why is it that you can't make me not do that you know <laughs> come on and so kind of foisting it over onto him you know and yet like she said we got a choice and it's not one choice in the morning it's multiple choices all day long we've got choices of, of what we can do and the Holy Spirit 
because we've all been justified and saved. The Holy Spirit is within us. Uh, somebody once gave me a picture of the Holy Spirit as uh, me inviting a person in to clean my house. And I let them come into the back hallway and say, that's it. I don't want you to come into my house any further. So I end up with a very clean back hallway, but the rest of the house is filthy. The more I let the Holy Spirit into my house, the more I let the cleaning person into my house, the cleaner my house becomes. But I have to let them in. And that's the hardest part for me. That has been the hardest part for me. Somebody once asked me, so why do you follow Jesus? And I had to tell them, after I thought about it for a little, little bit, I said, because I've lived life not. And I heartily recommend the with, okay? I've tried it the other way, and it absolutely sucks. Um, the nice thing about sanctification, there's no checklist, okay? There's not a one, and then one leads to two, and then two leads to three, and you just tick them off and go like that. It's an ongoing process. The Holy Spirit works on us getting rid of some of the memory, okay, that, that we have, that we want to bring in. It's not a complete and total erasure of, of who we are. Our personality stays. Some of this I'm not pulling out of the Bible necessarily, but I think it's where I've been led to, to think about. Um, has anybody in this room ever doubted that God could change us? <coughs> amen? Yeah, amen. You know, it's, uh, he can probably do a, a really wonderful thing with this person who's almost a saint over here and all that, but I know me, okay? There's only one person that knows me better, she's close, but knows me better than me, and that's God. That's why I made the comment of are we the, the potter or the clay. In, in, in my mind, in this analogy, I'm the potter and the clay is my sin that wants to keep going. You know, as much as I press on it and try to change oh, cool. it, it wants to go back to yeah. what what it was. And without and without God's presence to do it, that I don't know where God is in this analogy, but yeah. he's he's if when he's not there, that's what I see the clay being sin. Cool. Look at I it. love that analogy of yeah. the potter. Oh, Lord, we still have 20 minutes worth of discussion, and we've got two minutes left <laughs> to do this. So we're just going to leave. But we don't really have, I, I talked to Chad, we don't have a real large buffer. So we can't, like, push the discussion of this into next week. Okay? Uh, we will pick up some of this next week before we watch the video. Um, but I don't want to push anybody out but we do also now have to come back in here and clean this area before the next service. So, Steve, you had something? I just, just one quick comment. I'm just glad you, you mentioned that checklist. I think the checklist can really trip us up. Oh. Um, yeah. And I would kind of like to have a checklist. <laughs> you know, because... <laughs> but you're right, it would trip you up. But that's kind of, I find my sinful, you know, like, yeah, that'd be nice. Well, I got that done. Well, because you're yeah, still in charge. Yeah. What's that? Because then you're still in charge. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Yeah, I'm going to skip three. I'm going to go to six. I'll come back and catch four later on. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. and well, now I've gotten this goals. one, this one, and this one. I can forget them. I, I like to work on goals, but accomplish goals that I can accomplish. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, the same as a checklist. Mm -hmm. just, just try to get another one. I'm and gonna share one thing progress with progress rather than spiritual perfection. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna share one one life story with you and then we're gonna get going because I'm two minutes over right now and Pastor just walked in and glared at me. So at any rate, um, way back when, and I mean back when Tony was down like this, up for quite a long period of time in my life, uh, I was the kind of male that gentlemen, you did not want your daughter to bring home to introduce to, okay? I was absolutely 180 degrees what you wanted your daughter to even walk across the street from, let alone be involved with. And I tried to change some of that on my own and failed miserably. Actually made things worse, actually made things worse. But once, and I don't know for exactly sure when, I can't tell you the moment 
that I accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior. I can't do that. But the moment I did, there were these very small, almost infinitesimal changes that went on. And it's been a long, ongoing process. And I'm just about to where I should start. That's how long this has been going on. So, Sandy, who is also, <laughs> believe it or not, a facilitator in this presentation, which you <laughs> didn't necessarily know. <laughs> Apparently you haven't been silent long enough to let her get a word in it. Oh, that's true, too. Yeah. Welcome to her world around our house for the rest of the week. Yeah. So she's going to lead us out in prayer. Father, we have really had the opportunity to share some insights that we have from the wisdom that you've given to us, and we learn so much about you from others' experiences and others' wisdom, and, and just thank you, Father. We thank you for this sanctification process that would probably re be really painful if we had to do it all at once, so thank you for the small steps. And thank you for the um, presentation, for the ability to be able to just dig back into your word, Lord. We pray all these things, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I will ask Chad to do an individual email to each one of you guys with the links for the readings and reflections during the week. He may also do a churchwide. So be looking for it one way or the other. Um, but to help you between now and next week, Romans 8, 5 through 8, and Ephesians 2, 1 through 10. Those would be some real good scriptures. Okay? Thank you much. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.